why 48 volt system makes so much sense for this build. This van build has been stretched throughout two years, I think, for multiple reasons, but we're only a few months away from being done and start testing all of these systems. There has been a massive progress on this van build. We have a heated floors installed, we have a vinyl installed, I progressed on a water system, I have a kitchen galley pre-made and I'm able to work on this electric system which I would like to talk about right now. So to understand this concept you need to get an idea what this van is even about because the layout the way it is now I purposely have a most of the weight distributed on a rear axle. That means water tank right below us big power bank sitting right here in this space same with a heavy 20 kilo inverter and two electric bikes next to each other so weight distribution is really important for the safety of a, of a vehicle and and a good maneuvering if you want to call it this way let me tell you why 48 volt system makes so much sense mainly for all the appliances 12 volt obviously has the biggest support for all the hardware most of the things are for 12 volt system. That's a starting battery and in truck and buses case, 24 volt system. Well, I had to rethink this approach a little bit more. Obviously for 12 volt system, in a case of my need, big draws. I'm gonna be charging the electric bikes with three kilowatts. I'm running this time no propane, I'm running induction stove on electricity. We're running the oven on electricity. We have a 3D printer on board. So this time I decided to skip this whole DC obsession, stayed on a DC. Instead, I decided to go for a high quality efficient inverter that sets me trouble free forever. <laughs> you know, every single appliance you have in a house you can have here. That's why this is closer to off-grid house instead of a camper van. There is so many benefits why to go for 48 volt system, especially for these big draw appliances. While mainly I'm carrying much less copper and I save a lot of money on a thick wires because right away I can be running reasonably thin cables and have a really powerful appliances behind. When I started uh, exploring this option, I didn't even realize these 48 volt inverters are actually the cheapest option. When you look at a 48 volt system and 230, the gap between them shrinks a lot. It's much easier for the hardware. It's much easier to design such a unit. That's why these inverters are so much cheaper. I love it. There is a same version that has uh, internal charger as well and I decided not to go for that one. I'll explain in a minute because I want to walk you through the whole setup. So pretty much the whole power bank that I started working on this week is gonna be sitting here and it takes the whole space. It's pretty simple setup when you understand the principle. When I have a main switch for the battery right here I can unplug and plug the battery to the system with just a switch. Super easy for maintenance, for anything I would potentially need. Then all the power goes to these distribution blocks. Most people use Victron distribution block. I found it unnecessary, expensive and too bulky for a 48 volt system. So this is for car automotive distribution with a MIDI fuses in there. Then from here I can run the fuses to all of the appliances here. You definitely know this is a breaker coming straight from the solar panels. We have one kilowatt, they tilt, they'll be able to follow the sun. It goes to charge controller and from there through the fuse it goes back to the distribution block to the battery. Easy. Victron, that's easy, that's positive and negative, goes here and then we go to the automatic switching box if that's how it's called when you pretty much have primary and secondary power sources and it automatically switches so because this is on a second priority stream the moment i plug the camper van to the any kind of a household outlet it automatically switches and prioritizes the other input 
I would like to start from this side. This is uh, the only 12 volt uh, conversion I have because obviously everybody has a lot of 12 volt appliances. So that takes care of that. That's plugged to the distribution box, steps down the voltage from 48 volt to 12 volt, goes through the fuse box and gets distributed all over the place. This is a ground bar, pretty obvious. And this is a cool little device. That is a step up DC-DC converter. So most of the time we're gonna have one bike here, another bike here. So I can use this to set up desirable voltage for my specific bike I have. And I can with no conversion, no need to convert through AC, I can be just charging this bike. This is a starting car battery charger that's 10 amps. Does the job. When we're plugged to the grid, it starts charging the car battery. This is the cool part. This is a AC DC power source that's gonna be charging my lithium power bank with three kilowatts. Here's something really cool I improved on the top of our previous van design. We had a self retractable cord from below the car. You know, it's always a hassle to be carrying a wire where you need to plug to the campsite, always roll it, always in a way. So, self retractable cord was so so cool this time i'm taking it step further because i purchased three phase self-retractable cord that is usually uh, applied in a more industrial use if i plug the van in a grid system let's say all three phases then one phase automatically skips inverter and goes to my car outlets feeds the induction stove, feeds the oven, 3D printer, heated floors, everything. Second phase is used only for this charger. We usually are pretty spoiled, so when we are plugged to the grid, we immediately crank up the heating floor, we immediately start cooking on electricity much more. <laughs> you know, we take advantage of it. So the moment I can use the second phase independently, to only use the charger and start charging the lithium power bank with three kilowatts is pretty, pretty mind blowing. Third phase will have a separate outlet in a garage right here and right here, only dedicated to electric bikes. That to me is really incredible solution because I'm gonna have a bunch of adapters. I'm gonna have a two phase for most of the campsites, type two connector for car charging stations. I'm gonna have a standard three phase, 16 and 32 amps. All of the dongles I'm gonna have organized here in a car. Just yesterday I started working on this custom lithium power bank because I just received these aluminum bus bars. I drew them and I ordered them from a local laser cutter, 180 cells in total. These are 3.6 volt nominal each, and I'm just combining them in a, in a 12S 15P configuration. This is interesting for some of you, the technical spirits. This is 44 volts nominal, 300 amp hours capacity. My range will be from 36 volts fully discharged to 50 volts fully charged. This pack has a 77 kilos and is 13 kilowatt hours. 6,500 amp hours on a 12 volt system. I like that. I already have a Bluetooth BMS. And that's pretty much all my simple setup. I don't need any smart chance. I don't need anything because I'm just used to connecting through my phone to Bluetooth BMS and see all the stats, see all the settings and see all the capacity voltage there. Oh, these don't burn, by the way, if you're asking me. These are pretty safe cells. So just in case we have an accident, we're gonna be fine. This is a 230 volts uh, fridge I'm using from the other side of the electronics box. Way distribution is pretty obvious. Again, everything on a rear axle, nicely distributed. Second reason is having it as high as possible because it's just more convenient for humans to access and reach and see. And uh, why I go for 230? They're so much cheaper. There's so many more options to choose from. 
So I was able to get the biggest possible size that fits in our camper van, have the quietest and also have the most efficient power consumption. I look at the really detailed comparison videos where, uh, where a guy compared 12 volt fridge versus 230 volt, volt through inverter. When you have a good efficient inverter, which we do have, there is a difference only like 15 watts when it actually runs. And it doesn't run all the time, only when the compressor turns on. And because the Victron has a sleep mode and I can set up a threshold when it's gonna turn on, it can seriously turn on automatically every single time the fridge asks for it. This space <laughs> is just so lovely. I can't wait to start making ice for drinks, having ice cream. Ooh, that's a nice and spacious fridge. <laughs> this has been a fun day project, a little update. It looks like a super tiny little galley <laughs> that is made before kids to play with for little girls <laughs> but hey it's pretty awesome this is a beautiful space saving uh, system when we have the top drawer for cutlery and plates and bowls super thin maximizing the space these are not 500 millimeter deep drawers these are actually 550 to maximize the depth and just give us the little extra five centimeters of storage <laughs> So then this will be most probably for blender, for panini maker. Hopefully we'll be able to fit maybe a pot. We'll see about it. Really important thing we see with Margaret that a lot of people forget in their van builds is a garbage bin, right? We do generate a lot of garbage, unfortunately. And this time we crack the issue once for all, when we can be recycling general waste, plastic and glass. If you think this is a space waste, well, you might be right. You know what? We can actually always use the rear garbage bin for water bottles or for cleaning supplies. I don't know. This is the deepest. That's the huge one. <laughs> And the oven, ooh, that's always been a dream to have in a camper van. This is ridiculously small, 1600 watts oven. It's good probably just for two potatoes and a toast. <laughs> no, I think actually for two people, this is a perfect size. Microwaves are not our thing, but baking, baking is like a potato, baked potato with an onion and, and garlic, baked garlic. Oh, wow, that's gonna be amazing to take it with us. So this is the upgraded version of the self-retractable electric wire extension cord. I did something super sketchy on a previous van. I only, the way I solved this thing, is that I left this whole drum from under the van. I only took one metal bracket and bolted it to the chassis of the car. Ran this wire, obviously cut this, run it to the car, plug it to the breaker and distribute it in the van. All good. This just had a cap over, so it's waterproof. But this was the sketchiest. To waterproof this whole box, I only took that shrink transparent wrap and wrapped it all around to prevent any water getting in and you know what the whole time it actually worked but this time <laughs> i need to step it up a little bit that's the best thing that this is a three-phase wire you know one of these industrial ones well i'm gonna definitely cut the wire and i'm gonna use probably the type two or three single outlets for domestic use, you know, because priority is like, what do you find the most often, right? I don't know, I guess domesticated plug, 230. So if I have three of them, I would be able to, that's smart, Ooh. wow, that's awesome. So if I have three of these single outlets on this end, then I can just have one bag and cover them all under the car, right? Fine. Then I have them labeled, one, two, three. I actually can plug either of them 
based on what I want to be using inside of a car. Is it cooking? Is it comfort and heat? Fine, let's plug that in. Is it charging a power bank with 3 kilowatts? Well, that's actually a pretty good option for two things. I can still have the inverter on and run all the outlets and oven and everything through the inverter. I would only be charging the difference between what I take and what I get. So maybe if I'm cooking with one kilowatt, I'm still charging with two kilowatts. Or maybe I have plenty of power for my one kilowatt solar panel. I'm not using anything and I only want to be charging bikes. Then I plug the number three outlet and I can only have bikes at the back of the van plugged to that outlet and charging inside. Or we have options like in a campsite, the double phase outlet, or we have these three phase outlets. Wow, type two, anything. It's been super awesome to finally be in a finish line doing the systems. This following week, I'll be able to install the power bank and immediately see see what's up <laughs> i'm gonna take the van out and see when i tilt it how much the solar charges i can see the real stats i can be running the inverter i can be running the 3d printer we will have the systems in place which is awesome if you've seen the previous video you also know i've been working on a heat exchanger and a water system and i'm mainly filming all the details because they are stretched through so much time to categorize them in one single video I'll be publishing later. Same with electronics, same with the power bank. I'm gonna be covering these systems separately in the following videos. There is one particular system I'm still unsure about and that is the second alternator. Would you guys mind sharing um, how you've dealt with your second alternator? Like for example, have you had to replace serpentil belt for something larger? or were you able to squeeze it in on these Ducado ProMaster chassis? What controller do you use? I'm curious how you convert AC to DC and what uh, keeps an eye on your batteries. I'm curious um, if you by any chance know any 48 volt alternators, which I think most commonly people do 12 and 24 volts. They're pretty expensive. So I'm mainly curious if you were able to walk around it because I noticed the hybrid cars have 48 volt alternators. So that's an option. I noticed the controllers for alternators are pretty expensive too. So I'm curious, have you considered like a turbine controller or maybe e-bike controllers and see the alternator as a regenerative braking? I don't know. I'm considering all of these options and I'm really unsure at the moment. Share your wisdom. I try to do my part so we can do better. See you next time. Cheers guys.